What's your favorite thing to make? Um, sourdough. You like to make sourdough? You're my big helper. I'm so excited you're gonna be helping me. because it is so easy and so healthy for you. Because I've done a little research about sourdough and how it's so easy for your body to digest compared to other breads. <laughs> <laughs> she really is so much fun to cook with. I'm always laughing with Polly Pop is helping me. Um, but after doing some research, this is so healthy for your gut. Um, I'm gonna add that one. Okay. So I just feel like it's something that I'm helping my family with in making this every week. And it is so easy. I promise if you do it once, you'll be hooked. So I found a sourdough starter that I really wanted to get and I bought it and it came with this recipe book called Around the Family Table. I think the sourdough starter, it was two tablespoons and it was $1. And then this book is my favorite recipe for sourdough. Um, and it's called the honey oat bread and I'll give you the recipe here. It is so soft and so moist. I make dinner rolls out of it. The kids devour it. It is just, it is pretty much a no-fail recipe. Mommy, I'm leaving. Where are you going? I'm going to the hospital. You're going to the hospital? Why? Because my belly's hurting. Your belly's hurting? Why's your belly hurting? Because no, no, I'm going to the hospital. Okay. So the first step in the process is you are gonna take your oats. I'm leaving. Don't leave me, I need your help. And you're just gonna blend these up in your blender. It takes literally 30 seconds, but if you don't have a blender or mixer like I have back there, you could easily just use oat flour. Um, but the key is you wanna put it with your water and you're gonna let that sit until it kind of absorbs all the moisture. And this makes a big difference in the bread. Okay, so I'm gonna take three-fourths a cup of oats and I'm gonna add it to my blender. I'm gonna blend it up till it's like a flour or a powder. And then I'm gonna add it to my mixer to be with my water. Hey, Poppy, this is you. You hold this and I'll bring it to you, okay? Hold it right there. Very careful. Okay, you're gonna put it in here. one and three-fourths cup of water. Yes. And this is just gonna sit in your mixer and just set a timer for 10 minutes, okay? So during this time, I actually grind my wheat. And um, you, if you don't have a wheat grinder, I'll talk more about this at the end um, in case you're interested in getting a wheat grinder because it is much healthier for you. But if not, you can just use flour. I would recommend getting the unbleached flour because it's much better for you. So just get your unbleached flour if you're not gonna grind your wheat, but this is where I stop and grind my wheat. Okay, so this is my wheat grinder. I'll talk about it a little bit later, but um, I just order wheat berries and I add about seven cups to the top. Let it grind. You wanna let your grinder um, wait 15 seconds with nothing in it before and after. Okay, you ready to help me? Okay. Here you go. So this is my sourdough starter. I know this looks like a lot. You could just use um, a smaller amount, but I make so much sourdough that we keep it pretty much in stock all day, every day. Add two cups and like an eighth extra. So here we go, are you ready, Poppy? Yes. It's a little slippery, hold it up. One. Doughboy looks so happy. Happy. We say that every day. Yes. Are you ready for the next one? It's so sticky. It smells sour, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. 
So now we're just gonna add the rest of our ingredients right here and half of our flour. And I, I know this is a little tricky. I've never seen anybody else do this, but I like to start with this blending attachment first. And then I have found that instead of just moving straight to my dough hook after I start adding flour, I like to use this for half the flour. And then once it gets to more of a dough consistency, then I switch to my dough hook. And for some reason, it just mixes better for me. But you could just go straight from this to your dough hook if you prefer. But I'll, I'll let you know which step in the process I change. Okay, then I'm gonna add, I just get a third of a cup right here, and I'm gonna add half of the oil. So fill it up halfway. And this helps your honey not stick. No. And then the rest, we're gonna fill it up with honey. Are you gonna help me here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me scoot it a little closer. Oh, it's gonna be delicious. You ready? We gotta cook it and eat it. Yes. yes. Do you like bread? Yes, it's so yummy. We do. The honey's so yummy. Yes. It's it's sugar. Yes. And sugar's all honey. Yeah, it's like sugar. It's a little better for you though. The next thing we do is we're gonna add three tablespoons of vital wheat gluten. Mommy, I also can really make a tiny mess. Oh, it's okay. We're gonna make a big mess and then we'll clean it all up. The next thing is you're gonna do one and a half tablespoons of sunflower lecithin. And this will keep your bread softer. It'll actually help it keep longer too. There we go. You got it. So now this is mixed up, and I'm gonna switch. My hook. I'm gonna switch to this hook, and then I'm going to add half of my flour. And this will take just a little bit to incorporate. You don't want to add it too fast, or it's gonna puff up in your face. So even like half a cup increments. So it's going to be half of your flour is going to be two cups and an eighth. So just a little more than two cups. You ready? Yes. Are you gonna help me do this? Yes. And I do not pack down my flour, okay? I just kind of keep it in there light and fluffy. This is one cup. Just kind of shake it all around there. So we let this mix for just a second. Okay, now that I've mixed half of my flour, I'm gonna switch out to my dough hook now. Yes, okay, so now you have two cups and one eighth left, and you're gonna add them by half a cup increments, okay? So make sure it incorporates, and then by the time you finish adding them, it should start pulling away from the sides of the, uh, the bowl right here. And that's kind of your clue that your bread is almost ready to rest. Now I'm gonna stop my mixer, and I'm just gonna let it rest for 20 minutes. Just set a timer, let it sit, and after that, I'm gonna add my salt, which is my last ingredient, and then your bread will be ready to rise. Okay, so now this has been resting for 20 minutes. Now I'm gonna add my salt, and then I'm gonna let it mix for exactly nine minutes, okay? I know this is all tricky with the time. You're like, why is it so important? But this is honestly like a foolproof method. Like your gluten's developed properly. It's this right stretchiness. It's gonna rise. It's just, promise, it's the best way. Okay, so I'm just gonna add two, one fourth teaspoon of salt. And then just turn it on, set a timer for nine minutes. So now that I'm ready for my bread to rise, I'm just gonna add a little olive oil to the bottom of my bowl. I'm gonna mix it around the whole bowl because trust me, it's gonna rise double. I'm just gonna pick up my mixer head and now, Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> so I have this beautiful dough. Put it in my bowl. And I'm just gonna turn it over once so it's completely coated in the oil. And I'm gonna press it down. And I'm gonna let this rise five to six hours, depending on how hot your house is. That'll make a difference. But 
you want it to completely double in size and with this glass bowl you can see like um, how much it rises you'll see all the air bubbles inside okay so it's been almost five hours now and as you can see it's doubled in size I did do a little experiment this week this is the same exact amount of dough the only difference I did with this was I put saran wrap uh, coated in a little coconut oil and you see it actually roasts better and it actually has more air bubbles in it and the top is not as crusty because I feel like with sourdough it is a lot easier for the top to become a little crusty. So I would definitely recommend doing saran wrap instead of just a bread towel when you proof your bread. Look at that. Look, he is trying to pop out the seams. Look at all those bubbles. Oh my goodness. Hey, He's so do you want to? He is ginormous. Do you want to punch him down? Yes. So do a big punch. Can you get it? Punch him all the way down. Good job. Is that soft? This so is soft. the fun part. It really is. It's just the most beautiful dough. Gorgeous. So as you can see, it goes right back down. So all we're going to do is we're going to get it out of our bowl. Because now it's ready for its second proofing. Mommy, can oh, you... I mommy, honestly... What? Mom, can you give me a piece? Yes, you get a piece. I don't oil my countertops or anything, but can if you, you want to, piece? you can. Give me it. It's like the perfect dough, though, so you don't have to worry about it sticking to anything. So this amount of dough makes two loaves of bread, or like me, you can do one loaf of bread, and I prefer rolls. Um, just because they're easy to freeze, if you're not ready to eat them all, they freeze beautifully. You can stick them in the oven on 350 for about seven minutes, and they turn out like beautiful dinner rolls. And they're easy, like for breakfasts, you can add Mommy. some jelly and butter to it, and the kids just they love them. Okay, are you ready? Yes. So, yep. if I'm making two loaves of bread, I just try to get a shape right here and try to eyeball it halfway. So then, uh, this would be my bread loaf. So I'm just gonna take it and I'm rolling it into itself. I just want some tautness there. And this will make your bread rice beautifully. So I'm just rolling it into itself, as you can see. So it's taut on the top right here. And then I'm just gonna put it right here. Okay, and this will double in size again, okay? So I just leave it here and do the same thing with saran wrap. You're just gonna take a piece of saran wrap, spray it with some olive oil or coconut oil, and you're going to let it proof for about two hours. So, so now for this, I'm gonna separate it into rolls. So the tricky part is trying to eyeball and get the correct size for each roll, but it's okay. You might have some tiny rolls and some bigger rolls, but they'll be just as delicious. But the key is you really want them to be touching because if you don't have them touching, then they're gonna rise out. But if you have them touching, they always rise up. So these these big like yeast dinner rolls. Okay, so I just make a long shape and I split it down the middle. So I have almost two even snakes here. Are you ready to help me roll some dough balls? Uh-huh. Oh, you got a roller. Oh, perfect. This is full. Oh, that's perfect. You're gonna roll your dough? Can I rinse them off? Okay. Yes. You wanna make sure he's clean. Okay, so now I'm just gonna try to make the ends a little more even, get it as even as I can. Then I'm just gonna eyeball it and make about this size, so it's a, it just fits in your hand perfectly. And then I'm just gonna go down the whole row of both of them. When you grow up into a mom, you're gonna cook? Yes. Oh, that's so sweet. What are you gonna make? Um, cheese and bread. Cheese and bread? Mmm. Your kids are gonna be healthy. Yes. Are you gonna have kids? Yes. Yep. Uh, after I grow up into a mom. Yes, after you grow up into a mommy. Do you want to have a lot of kids? Yes. How many kids do you want to have? Two. Two? Yes. That's not a lot. Okay, so you can see I just have a pile of different sized rolls. And this is typically when the kids love to help because they get to, you know, play with it. Like, honestly, playing with Play-Doh. So I each give them their little balls. But um, for you, you're basically going to take this little piece of dough and you are just rolling it into itself. So... Everything rolls into the Mommy, middle, and this will keep it. Okay, you can wash your hands. This will keep it tight on the top, 
And then I'm just gonna place them in my pan and they're gonna touch. Okay, so I'm gonna let this, I'm gonna cover this with my saran wrap and I'm gonna let it rise for about an hour and a half and then I'm going to score it with my razor blade. I'll show you how to do that and then it'll basically rise for another 30 minutes and be ready to bake. So I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees and I have about 15 more minutes for them to rise and I'm gonna just score them and I'm just gonna start at this end and cut it. And this helps it actually to rise better and to rise upward instead of out. And I like to wet my blade right before I cut it and it actually makes a better cut. And I do the same things to my rolls, which you can see they've doubled in size. Okay, so now I'm gonna put them in the oven on 350 and I'm gonna do the bread for 28 minutes to 30 minutes. I mean, that is the sweet spot. Okay, so my first batch of rolls are done. And as you can see, they're slightly brown on top and you're just gonna literally set them down on your cooling pad. Go around it with a knife or a spatula to make sure it's not connected, oops, sorry, to the side. So then you kind of need an, uh, another person to help you with this, um, which yeah, it's usually the person to help me with this. <laughs> so you just pick up one side and one person grabs paper because you don't want them to stay in this pan or they're gonna continue cooking and we don't want them to do that. We want them to start cooling now. So then you're just gonna transfer it to a cooling rack and slide the paper out without burning yourself. And all you do now is you're just gonna let them cool. That'll take about an hour and wrap them in saran wrap, put them in a bread bag, or if you're gonna keep half of them, um, put half of them in the freezer, you're good to do that right then. And then I'll be waiting on my bread. Who wants mm. bread? Don't burn yourself, be careful. With butter and jelly? Bread and butter. Oh, me. That doesn't look like me. That is. Doesn't that look delicious? Mm. Holly, you're the helper Thank today. You yeah. helped me make it. Now you just want to pull this out of the pan so it doesn't continue cooking. I can do this one-handed. You're just going to grab your parchment paper. Oh, grab the parchment like paper. so. And set it down. And same here. You want to just set it here and pull it out from the bottom. Oh, it's just so soft and it smells so good. Holly, would you like a roll with butter and jelly on it? Those are rolls. These are the best. Can I have one, some? please? You may. Okay, so let's just make some. It's like the softest, squishiest bread ever. It's absolutely, I promise, it's like a little bit of heaven. Do you want a roll with butter and jelly on it? No. I want butter and Does, jelly on it. You want butter and jelly on it? So this is about sourdough. If you're worried about how to keep your sourdough, how to feed your sourdough, um, I started with two tablespoons and I do a one-to-one -one ratio of sourdough starter and flour. And it always is that. And then I do about three-fourths water. So you have one-to-one -one flour and three-fourths water. Um, so I started with two tablespoons and it basically doubles usually. So I started feeding it every day until I got about two cups of starter. Once I had two cups, then I started making different recipes using my sourdough. So for this particular bread recipe that I'm teaching you about, um, the best, I guess, fermentation process of your sourdough is seven to nine hours after you feed it. So whenever I'm gonna make bread, say I'm gonna make bread at 9 a.m., I need to feed it seven to nine hours before then to get it at its peak. Um, and it's gonna be the best for your body to digest as well. 
Um, some people are not as particular about that, but if you want to do the best for your body as far as digestion, um, that's the best for this recipe. Um, as far as making pancakes, waffles, cookies, um, muffins, breads, typically they're made with a discard. So you have your sourdough. So this would be, say this is my daily sourdough. So I'm gonna take, it's about a half a cup. So I'm going to, let's say I only want to keep like maybe a fourth a cup. So I'm gonna take your fourth a cup and I'm gonna feed it just like normal. So fourth a cup flour, fourth a cup um, starter, and I'm gonna do probably just a little less water. Um, then whatever I don't use would be called discard. So I'm not refeeding this. Um, and that's what I would typically use for my muffins or pancakes or waffles. But if you're not ready to start baking or you're not gonna keep baking you know, every three days, I would just take your starter and put it in the fridge, cover it tightly, put it in the fridge or else it'll start to smell sour a little bit. And then you just pull it out, usually a day before you're ready to make it, if you're ready to make bread with an active starter and then you're just gonna feed it a couple times before you make bread. You can even feed up to three times in a day if you're really trying to grow your starter, um, but feeding it one time will be sufficient. You want it to be bubbly and have that sour smell and double in size. So you see the bubbles in there. Um, this just means you have a really happy starter and it'll typically double in size. So for instance, let's say you want to bake bread once a month. I would keep your sourdough in the fridge and then two days before you're ready to make your bread, pull it out, put it on the counter. I just got this canister from Walmart. It's a wide mouth, so it's easy um, to access and stir and mix. After you feed it, wait nine hours, seven to nine hours, and then make your bread. Also, you do not want to use metal in stirring it and mixing it. You don't want to keep it in anything metal. So it needs to be glass, and then um, like a silicone little spatula. Something like this is typically what I mix mine with. Um, it's so easy and it's really, it's amazing how much sourdough you can make. I always say I have a bathtub full and I, I just want to give it to everybody, you know, here's a little starter for you to start. But if, if you are ready to start the process, I cannot recommend this sourdough enough. It's not an ad or anything like that. I don't know the people, but I do love what they came up with and I do love their recipe. It's, it's seriously amazing. It's called AroundTheFamilyTable.com. You can Google it, whatever, and see what you think about it. So this is called a Nutri-Mill Grinder, and I did quite a bit of research to try to find out what would be the longest lasting, most durable, hold the most, because I wanted to grind quite a bit at a time. Typically, I make four to five loaves at a time. Um, so this is what I found to be best for what I needed. It's very slim line. I just keep it on top of my refrigerator. It has a little lid here and a huge, I think this holds 20 cups. Um, it's not very loud, but the only downside is you have to really make sure that your bottom is locked in before you grind. kind of hard to make sure it's locked in, but there's a little line here that says, yes, it's locked in and no, it's not, <laughs> but it is still tricky. Um, you wanna make sure you get that click. Um, it's worked very well for us and we've loved this. Um, second, I just used a KitchenAid. I, I actually started out with a Bosch and I, I love the fact that you could add from the top. You weren't limited by this big motor right here. But for me, I don't know why, it might just have been the way I was doing it, but it did not mix as well. Um, and that's possibly because we got a used one. But um, I switched to a KitchenAid, and this one is the Artisan. It holds quite a bit more, I guess not quite a bit more, maybe like a, I think this is a 5.4 quart, I think. Um, but for dough, it makes a big difference. I still wish I had a bigger size in it, but this has been great for us. If I change out the hooks, it makes quite a big difference in mixing my dough properly. So every week, I borrow my sister's, <laughs> because Tori, um, she's, she doesn't use it as much, and I'm like, can I borrow your, your mixer if I give you some bread? And um, Because this just does not hold the full recipe, so I actually had half the recipe 
to do half here and half there, and it makes about four to five loaves. So as far as buying your wheat, if you want to go the route of grinding your wheat, it is quite a bit cheaper and it's actually better for you um, because it's fresh and you can do some research on that yourself. But I have bought mine from two different places. I will link them below if you're interested. Our favorite place to buy honestly everything, our honey, our olive oil, um, your lecithin, your wheat gluten, it is called Azure Standard. It's basically like a co-op, but it brings down the price quite a bit because you typically buy in bulk. So we buy the wheat by five gallon buckets and it will last you forever. I've actually only been through not even a whole bucket and that's been over the course of a few months. You can research that. You can even, if you're willing to start out, you can find it at a Whole Foods near you. Um, just to start out to see if you're ready to start that pro process and then compare prices. But that's what we do and it's worked great for us.